What's up folks, in today's video I want to show you my storage, editing and backup workflow. First of all, I hope you're all staying safe, staying inside as much as you can, not going out into large groups and not going to visit your grandparents. Even though this is kind of a perfect time to make a video about my post-production stuff, I am personally slowly descending into madness over the past couple days. But a few days ago, someone in the YouTube comments asked me about this and I figured if one person is curious, maybe some other people are curious as well. So the first thing I do is open up Lightroom and plug my SD card into my laptop. And this screen will be the first one that pops up and it'll have all your pictures on your memory card in there. I've got days and days worth in here, but this is the start of the pictures that I'm going to import. So usually they'd be at the top here, but I've just scrolled down for the sake of this video. So I'll highlight the first one and I'll actually uncheck all of the images and then I'll go down and find the, the last picture or the first picture in the ones that I want to import. And I'll hit shift and just select all of them and then I'll tick that box there so that highlights all of them to be brought in. And I'll go over here and usually I'll just do a minimal build preview. It just it's the smallest like file size for Lightroom. If I'm editing a wedding or something where I'm being paid, I'll hit one to one. And that just makes the previews full size, which means that when you zoom in on them, they're gonna be at full size and not take that extra time to like load up. So if you ever notice Lightroom sometimes takes a while, it'll be fuzzy when you zoom in and then after a few seconds, it builds that full preview so that you can see the full resolution. One to one just means that you'll see that full resolution straight away. So for this case, I'm gonna leave it on minimal. Um, I'll go down here to apply during import and develop settings. A lot of the time I'll leave it on none, but if I know that I'm gonna do pretty much the same edit on a picture, I'll go and just find the preset I wanna apply and I'll just have it apply that over all the pictures while it imports. If I want to put any keywords in here so it's easily searchable later on, I'll type it in here. In this case, I don't think I want to put anything in there. Down in this corner under the destination, this is my hard drive here, my external hard drive. I've got a folder for 2020 and I've got a folder for photos, which I'll open up. And then I've got a folder for each month. So I'll go to March and I'll create a new folder. And then this window will pop up and I'll just command shift new and put name the folder whatever whatever will help me to remember what's in it and then I'll do a new folder for raw files and I'll go back and a new folder for the edited files create that and I'll go back and go into raw choose that as the folder that I want to import to and then I'll hit import. I keep a pretty simple folder structure. It's been more complex over the past few years and each year I've sort of managed to make it simpler and simpler so that I can more easily find pictures in the future. So once all the photos are imported, I'm just going to maximize this screen. I'll close the tabs on the side so I can see more of the pictures and then I'll just scroll through and I'll hit five star on the pictures that I think I want to keep. And generally I won't zoom in too close to them. You can kind of tell from the thumbnail and if it doesn't look like a nice photo from the thumbnail then maybe it won't look like a nice photo when it's full size either. That one. That one. Sometimes if I like multiples of a picture I'll just import them all or import two or three of them and then decide at a later stage. But in this case, I don't think I have one like that. So I'll just stick with what I've got. Okay, once I've five starred all the ones that I wanna keep, I'll come down here and filter by star rating. And then that'll filter down this uh, film strip at the bottom here so that we can see only the pictures that we wanna keep. So then I'll go back to the start and I'll hit the D button and I'll bring up this develop module here and I'll just kind of tweak pictures to how I want them. Let's brighten up a little bit. 
bring those highlights down maybe lift the shadows a touch drop the blacks there add a little bit of vibrance and that'll probably do it for that one I might actually also go over here and add some warmth into the shadows no, I'm going to leave it. Leave it as it is. I liked it the first way. And that's it for that one. The next one, I'm going to brighten this one up as well. Highlights down a touch. Shadows up a touch. And the blacks down just a little bit again. And also add some vibrance to that photo. As much as possible, I'll have a very light touch in editing. I generally find that it looks more natural and when the photos look a bit more natural they also end up looking a bit more professional. When you over edit things they start to look a bit too stylized and they don't age as well that way. But that's also my opinion. If you like crazy edits then by all means go for it. Don't let me stop you. This one's also a little dark. Let's brighten it up. It's about there. Highlights are fine in this one. I'm going to bring the whites up a little bit, try and add some contrast in. Lift the shadows slightly and bring the blacks back down. This one I might warm up a little bit and also it's looking a little bit magenta, so I'm going to put a little bit green back in it, brighten it up a little bit. And I'm just going to darken the blacks on this one. I think I'll leave it at that. This one I pretty much like as it is. I might add a little contrast. I don't think it needs brightened up. Drop the blacks a little bit. And up the vibrance. That's it. Brighten this one a little bit. Also bring the highlights down. Shadows are fine. And I'm just going to drop those blacks a bit. Again, I'll just add a little bit of vibrance. There we go. This one I'm going to warm up a little bit, brighten it, but then bring the highlights back. And I'm going to drop the blacks, add a touch of vibrance again, and then move on. This one's bright enough, I think. Might lift the shadows a little bit, and then bring the blacks back. Add some vibrance. I'm going to warm it up just a little bit. Normally I would straighten horizons a lot of the time, but for something about this one that makes it feel a bit more spontaneous, um, I think I've been looking at was it Gary Winogrand, I think, always had the crooked horizon lines and they tended to feel a bit more spontaneous. So I'm trying to not level out all my photos if they're really off like this just to see how that so I'll see how that works out might start doing it again but for now I kind of like this uh, this one my wife just happened to stand this way I did not pose her like this I'm just going to brighten it up a little bit add some warmth back in there maybe lift the shadows a touch bring the blacks back and some vibrance just to finish it off. And that's it. Once I've been through all them, I'll hit Command A, which highlights all the pictures, and I'll do Command Shift E, which brings up this export box thing. I'll name the file, and my export location, I'll put specific folder so that it gives me the option afterwards. You can change it here if you like, but I just like to have it in specific folder. Sometimes I'll also lower the quality of the JPEG if I know that I'm never going to want it to be a larger file than that. Uh, but recently, I've just been leaving it at 100. I don't mess around too much in here. Just change the quality of it, change the file size, and that's about it. So hit export and it'll bring up this box. It's going to ask me where it wants it saved. So this is the folder where I made the two folders before. I'm going to the edit one and hit open and it'll save into there. Now for backups, I don't really keep backups of my raw files or unedited files. 
I only really have them on the external hard drive. After I'm finished editing something, I generally wipe my memory cards so that I no longer have them on the memory card. So I guess initially the memory card serves as a backup in case something goes wrong. But once I've edited it and saved those files, I get rid of the raw files on the memory card and I only have one copy of the raw files on my hard drive. But I do have a backup of the edited files. So there's one copy on this hard drive and I can't really afford to be buying lots of hard drives to have two copies of everything, at least not at this point. So what I do with all the edited files that I wanna keep is I have a OneDrive account. So I'll open up Microsoft OneDrive and I have a folder in OneDrive called 2020. And this is where I save all of my edited files that I wanna keep. So what I'll do is go up to Upload, go to Files, I'll go into my hard drive here, 2020 Photos, March, the folder we made today, Edits, highlight all of those, and then drag them into OneDrive. And that's it, and from there, I'll take those files, I'll airdrop them onto my phone. I have an app called SquareFit, which lets me fit them into a white square for Instagram, and that's how I get that gridded look. And that is my complete post-production backup storage workflow. It's definitely not the most complex out there, it's definitely not the most safe out there, but it tends to work well for me. It's enough for what I do just now. I like to keep it as basic as I can. I would love it to be even more simple, but at this point, this is the best I've got. If you like my videos, don't worry about subscribing or anything, but go and check out this playlist up in the corner. Thank you very much for watching, and yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. <laughs>